But before we start into agenda item number nine, um, I want to turn it over to Director Wasley for one more presentation. Tony? Thank you, Chairman Drew. Uh, there was one other employee that uh, we wanted to acknowledge. And I'm not sure, but I think it may, her tardy arrival may have been uh, an attempt to avoid such recognition. So we've outsmarted her, made sure she was in the room, and we're going to try this again. Uh, Joanne Trendler has, has 30 years with the department and is really uh, recognized as the, the glue that uh, holds a lot together in the department, specifically in the law enforcement ranks, um, looks after uh, all the folks in there to the point that um, I don't know what they do without her. So I want to recognize Joanne for 30 years of, of dedicated service. We decoyed you by being late from lunch break, just so you didn't know you were not going. But uh, in all honesty, just uh, appreciation to Joanne from the commission as well. She's helped us a ton, uh, whether it be in these meetings or committee meetings or whatever else. I sure appreciate, again, her efforts along with the rest of the staff. So we'll move to agenda item number 9, 2015 Legislative Session Update and Commission Bill Positions. Uh, myself and Ms. Jolly will be taking over on this item for possible action. Staff will present a status update and track legislation since the last Commission meeting. The Commission may consider any additional legislative positions or action. Um, at this point, everyone should have a handout in front of them. Um, just to remind folks what our positions are on different bills um, that we addressed in April. Um, to be honest, we're so late in the process at this point, I don't know um, that there's a lot we can do in terms of changing uh, positions uh, with the exception of one bill. All the bills that are dead because they didn't meet legislative deadlines um, essentially have been taken off the tracking list. There are extra copies in the back um, for folks, and I think there's a copy in Vegas and Elko as well. So um, what I'll do is I'll kind of step through this and ask him to maybe help me with any questions that I run across, let you know where we're at, um, and then I will actually have Chief uh, Turnip Seat come up and talk to us about AB 142, because that's the one bill that's kind of in play right now that uh, could have some pretty significant ramifications for the Commission and the Department. So in terms of AB uh, 35, that's the Vessel ID Compliance Bill. That's been approved. That was a department-sponsored bill. Actually, got done early in the session. AB 78 uh, started out as the endow bill regarding uh, elk fee and authorizing the commission to raise that fee from five to ten dollars. Um, it had been substantially amended as of when we met in April, um, and essentially the amendments took the elk fee out. Uh, talked specifically about some of the issues, uh, not the issues, but the commission tab. Uh, relationship and clarified that the cabs can meet at every single meeting uh, or prior to every one of our meetings rather than just quota and season setting meetings um, provided some direction to us in terms of writing a written explanation when we denied a season or quota recommendation from a cab and then the other big piece of it um, that we touched on a little bit this morning uh, is that uh, it dictated the three dollar predator fee 80% uh, of that funding had to go towards lethal projects. Um, we had to take input from the park committee. Um, at one point in the progression, I think when we last looked at it, it had the commission actually approving the plan instead of developing uh, that plan with guidance. Um, essentially what AB 78 ended up as uh, is very similar um, to what we reviewed last time. There was a conference committee on uh, Thursday morning at 7.15 with three members of the Senate and three members of the Assembly. Um, and essentially, it, it passed out as this commission reviewed it. I did have an opportunity to talk with uh, members from both houses that were on the conference committee and express our concerns or our inputs on that bill and the commission's position that we took last time. Um, I think some of those changes were incorporated and, and two of them were not. Um, in terms of what the 80% calculation was based off of uh, and the, in terms of the um, explanations back to the cabs being either at the meeting or in writing, that stayed the same. 
Um, the commission guidance language actually got put back in. Uh, essentially, there was a concern with diversion if the department wasn't approving the funding. And so essentially that language now is the same and the department will be approving the plan under our guidance and with recommendations from uh, the commission as well as recommendations from the park committee. So I think that gives you a thumbnail sketch of where AB 78 is. Um, I don't believe the conference committee report is available. It just happened yesterday morning, so I don't, you know, we don't have specific language. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think our inputs still stand. Um, my recommendation would be not to move uh, or change anything at this point. Any questions on AB 78? AB 82 was an end-out fiscal bill, a cleanup bill that was approved by the governor in April. AB 136 had to do with carrying a firearm during muzzleload or archery season and making accommodations for disabled hunters in taking hunter safety class. Um, the bill actually came over to the Senate and we provided uh, our commission position on the bill. Um, they actually cleaned it up a little bit and now it's very clear that you can carry a handgun. Uh, with a barrel no longer than eight inches and without a scope in the field during archery and muzzleloader seasons. Um, the accommodations for disabled sportsmen and taking hunter safety is still in place. And um, per our general platform, they are able to incorporate an amendment that will allow this commission to provide um, that provide regulations that a chaperone of a mobile impaired hunter can actually have someone uh, kill and retrieve a big game animal. And so that might be something, if it passes in its current form, uh, that would come back to us for regulation. Questions on 136? As of now, um, I think they're working up the amendment. Um, it has not come out to the Senate floor yet. So once it comes off the Senate floor, we'll go back to the assembly. Um, but I will relay that the sponsor of the bill is very happy that we're willing to work with them on coming out with kind of a good product and being proactive in that manner. So AB 142, I'm going to skip over at this time. So we'll come back to that. Um, AB 217 had to do with registration of off-highway vehicles. Um, we had a general platform on that to support continuation of the uh, registration and any amendments to improve efficiency and use of the registration program. It is an exempt bill and it's in ways and means. And to be honest, I haven't tracked this all that closely. So Kim, I don't know if you had any further update on 217. Kim Jolly for the record, management analyst three with the director's office, Lincoln Island. Um, AB 217 does have the, I guess it would be the second reprint uh, available. And it's a lot easier to understand than what we saw before. And it does maintain registration of OHVs, but it does have an exemption for large OHVs, like the four person OHVs and mini trucks. And then there's um, kind of a helmet, not, not being required for a helmet for certain, um, certain types of uh, vehicles. I think it's the mini trucks if they're on an OHV or if they're on an off highway road. So um, the backcountry hunters and anglers are supportive of that version, and like you said, it's exempt. So. AB 408 is the next one on our docket, and I don't think we've actually reviewed this, and we have no position. I mean, it has to do with law enforcement authority. Um, I think it's federal law enforcement authority on public lands. ATR 2 uh, was a resolution um, in support of increasing raven depredation. Uh, that's already been passed as a Secretary of State. Uh, SB4 was uh, Senator Settlemeyer's bill originally to clean up, uh, making sure there was an exemption on traps set on private property from the registration requirements. Um, it had since been amended to include uh, making trap registration voluntary rather than mandatory and also sent authority over shed antlers to uh, the various county commissions. Um, we had opposed those, pro those provisions, um, supported the original bill that came out of the Senate uh, with the private property exemption for trap registration. And if you'll remember, we were split on uh, the trap registration portion. 
That this has been on the chief clerk's desk in the assembly, which basically means it's sitting there doing nothing. Um, I've heard rumors that it might move, but to this point, as far as I know, it's still on the chief clerk's desk uh, with no changes to what we had reviewed in April. Any questions on any of those so far? SB 41 was the end out e duck stamp. Um, it was approved by the governor on in, in April 7th, and Director Wasley. Did you have an update on that? I do have an update that will be provided in the uh, department activity report. Sounds good. So footnote that. Um, we've got some good news. They actually came out of getting that passed quickly. SB 163 creates the Council on Nevada Wildlife Conservation Education within the Department of Wildlife. Um, that bill is exempt, and I think Ms. <laughs> Jolly actually just told me that there will be a Senate finance hearing on that this evening. Six thirty. Six o'clock uh, in Senate Finance in Room Two One Three Four. It's first on the agenda, so that's. Good. And as far as the amendments, my understanding is that the department um, has worked to clarify any possibility of a diversion. Um, Mr. Wasley or Patrick, I don't know if you wanted to address anything on that, but it's my understanding that the version that's going to be heard is very similar to what. We looked at last time, except there's been some minor adjustments to make sure there's not an issue with the version. Am I speaking directly to that? Uh, for the record, Patrick Cates, uh, that is correct. Uh, the Sportsman's Coalition asked for, through Senator Reed's office, asked for a formal letter from the feds about whether or not the bill constituted a diversion. Uh, as previously written, uh, the feds did write a letter to that effect, and they took, we worked together and worked on compromise language that addresses all those concerns. Thank you. Any questions on that one? Again, we kind of had a broad platform, um, and there, I don't think anything would necessarily change the platform at this point. SB 417 uh, prohibited the use of data to harass or take mammals, game birds, or other wildlife. This was in relation to uh, satellite GPS collars, telemetry collars, um, and survey data, and that actually has already been delivered to the governor. So it was a late bill in getting introduced and ended up sailing through the process very quickly. Um, SGR 1 urges Congress to enact legislation transferring federal lands to the state. Um, I believe that is passed out of committee in the assembly and will be on the assembly floor. Again, I don't think there's been any amendments that would result in us needing to change any sort of position. SGR 5 uh, expresses support of the 2014 Greater Sage Grouse Conservation Plan and not to list the Greater Sage Grouse is endangered. Um, this, this also cleared committee in the assembly, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, on, on for the record, the second reading means the second reading of the um, assembly floor. So SGR 1 and SGR 5 are in the same position without substantial changes, as I understand it. Uh, and then SGR 11, the proposed constitutional amendment to preserve the right to hunt, trap, and fish in the state um, actually has been passed and enrolled and delivered to the Secretary of State since our last meeting. So are there any questions um, on the bills that I just went through or any request to change anything at this point. My, again, my recommendation would be um, this late in the game to leave those um, positions in place at this point. I think we've been pretty clear. Any discussion by the commission? Okay, what I'll do is I'm going to take it out to public comment on that portion um, of what we've gone over just in case there is any, and then we'll bring it back and, and step through 142. So, at this point, is there any public comment on the bills that are on the spreadsheet or tab comment uh, that we just went through with the exception of AB 142? Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I, I just had a comment. Uh, you said that you uh, contacted the members on uh, AB 78 on both sides uh, on the conference committee, and uh, I was curious if you represent this commission spoke for the commission because I don't think it's legal for you to represent the commission at violation of meeting law without having a public hearing on it. Did you who did you represent on that? 
yourself or the commission? I think I'll, I'll address that when we bring it back. If you to represent the commission, I don't think that was right because okay. we would like to comment on it too. Additional public comment? Reno? No? Las Vegas? Public comment? No, Chairman, no public comment. Thank you. Public comment in Elko? No comment in Elko. Okay. We'll bring it back to the Commission um, to address uh, the fact that potentially I have been misrepresenting the Commission. Um, I think in my testimony and discussions uh, and talking with folks, I have made it clear when I'm representing the Commission and when I'm representing myself. And when I represent the Commission, what I am bound by representing are those positions and or platforms that are on this spreadsheet that we have talked about. Um, and I've done everything in my power to ensure that when we have those discussions, I represent whether I'm talking on behalf of myself or on behalf of the Commission's position. And so, outside of clarifying it more than that, um, that's where I'll leave it. So with that, uh, what I would like to do is move to AB 142. Um, if you'll recall, the last time we looked at AB 142, what we had uh, was a bill that had passed out of the assembly that had essentially taken our demerit system uh, and put it into NRS. Um, there was another part in there that talked about uh, hunter education cards and the removal of demerits. Um, if you had uh, not even taken, not necessarily taken the class, but had a hunter safety card um, and you presented it to the department, essentially you could take four demerits off. Uh, we did have a commission position in opposition to this. Um, there was a late amendment that came up for work session late Thursday afternoon. The amendment, I believe, was 24 pages in length um, and had a lot of different move, moving parts and pieces in it. Um, I did, on my own behalf, and I clarified this in the work session, offer an amendment in regards to the hunter safety class, which would allow a person to take hunter safety after uh, accumulating six demerits in order to remove four, and then it would only allow you to uh, do that once in a lifetime versus simply showing up with hunter education card and taking four demerits off. Um, again, I was given the opportunity to speak in the work session, and I made it abundantly clear that that was my personal amendment, that that was not the position of this commission. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, there were a lot of other provisions that we didn't have the opportunity to review until, uh, like I said, about an hour before the hearing. Um, I was able to uh, advance my two cents and my personal view on the different provisions of the bill. Um, but this is still in play in the legislature. Um, we don't have the version that, that potentially is being discussed today in front of us. But I did ask Mr. Turnipseed if he could just step us through all of the provisions, at least conceptually, that were discussed in AB 142 um, as of yesterday. So, Mr. Turnipseed, I'll turn it over to you to step through those provisions for us. Thank you, Chairman Drew and, and uh, members of the commission. Tyler Turnipseed, Chief Game Warden, for the record, the Department of Wildlife. Uh, as you said, Chairman Drew, this this uh, amendment that, that came yesterday, or series of amendments that came yesterday from Assemblyman Hanson were, were uh, far beyond anything that the original bill ever talked about. Uh, didn't have a chance to look at those much before the work session yesterday, but in the last uh, 24 hours I've given it a look and then looked at this morning's mock above it from LCB that, that uh, Tried to clarify it further. So the bill sort of bounces all over the place now. I'll just have to go through it section by section to let you know what I think each section does, what each amendment does, and uh, why a lot of them are, are very damaging in my opinion. Uh, so section 1.15 of the, of the bill is interesting language I've never seen before. It's very broad. It essentially uh, says that person cannot be found in violation of any wildlife law in any of our statutes unless he or she is proven to have knowingly and intentionally violated the law. Um, Mr. Hansen made some uh, points about how wildlife laws shouldn't be a criminal act, it should be some other legal term that I wasn't familiar with. It essentially places the burden of proof on us to prove that a person knew the law and then still violated it. Um, it, it would make it impossible to prosecute most of the violations we come across. 
section one point nine of the bill would increase from four to six the number of demerits that a person could remove from their accumulated total by taking the hunter education class this would be a significant expansion of that loophole we do however support the amendment that that chairman drew mentioned a minute ago about tightening that up to where a person can only take that once in their lifetime to reduce their demerits as it's currently written in statute a person could take that class to reduce four demerits rather than six and it would be allowed once in any 60 month period as you guys know from one of the cases that you've heard in recent years there have been instances where people continue to take that class as a get out of jail free card to to reduce their mistakes section one point nine subsection seven would limit the length of a license revocation to only three years as it stands right now the department and the commission can revoke a person for two to three years on a misdemeanor five years on a gross misdemeanor and ten on a felony and this would limit that to three years and that includes I believe that would also include the authority of judges and courts to to revoke for more than three years I think it limits not only our authority but the court's authority in my opinion a three-year license revocation is is certainly not sufficient for a big game poaching when someone kills an animal without a tag or out of season subsection or excuse me section two subsections four and six of the bill would reduce penalties for killing a mountain lion illegally from a felony to a misdemeanor that's been in the bill for a while now that's not not new language section two subsection seven speaks about five and ten year revocations which in my mind completely conflicts with section one point nine that limits the revocations to three years and subsection seven it's also problematic in that it takes the revocation authority away from the commission and the department and leaves it with the courts in my mind this is totally counter to one of the reasons that that Mr. Hansen first brought about the need for a demerit system 20 years ago in that his contention was we needed to take out some of the subjectivity and inconsistency from different court jurisdictions around the state in which a court in in jackpot may hammer someone for one violation and a court in Tonopah lets them go with a slap on the wrist for that same violation in my mind that was sort of the intention of the demerit system to make that consistent in each jurisdiction regardless of the local feelings on that particular law in a given area section three subsection six of the bill would take away the department's authority to revoke a person's privileges when they fail to pay their civil penalty after a while after conviction similarly section four of the bill would take away department authority to revoke a person's privileges when that person fails to appear in court on charges for wildlife crime or fails to pay their ticket as it is now if somebody fails to appear or they don't pay their ticket not only does the court issue a warrant for their arrest but we can also revoke their privileges and that subsection would take away our authority to do so section five of the bill states that a person's license privileges may not be revoked for a period of more than three years again section six of the bill again speaks to five and ten year revocations in conflict with the section right before it section nine point five of the bill would take away the authority of the commission to regulate the collection of shed antlers this is the one that you just mentioned had been put in a couple other bills that failed or were about to fail so took it out of those bills apparently and put it in this one essentially it it authorizes the commission to make regulations for the commercial collection of shed antlers as you guys well know from the testimony over the last two years we have no way to differentiate which person is a commercial shed antler collector and which is a non-commercial they don't wear name tags on the back that say that when they're out on the mountain as you know that an antler collector doesn't become commercial until months down the road when they when the antler buyer comes through town and they sell their stack of antlers so essentially unenforceable if it's limited to commercial and it kind of ignores the biological concern that you guys have talked about about displacing big game animals from off their crucial winter range habitat at a time when they're vulnerable if it ever snows again section 13 of the bill places the demerit schedule into nrs rather than nac and in doing so greatly reduces many of those actual demerit numbers there was testimony from assemblyman hansen yesterday that it didn't reduce very many of them when you go through and count there are actually 21 different wildlife crimes that the demerits would be reduced for section 14.5 of the bill 
would completely repeal the entire statute that deals with trap registration. As you guys know, this law and the regulations that you've dealt with that go hand in hand with the law have been in place since 1979 and especially sorted out in the last two years, including the 2013 session and all the work that this board and the subcommittees did in regards to trap registration. That section of the bill would completely eliminate that whole statute from NRS to where there would be no such thing as any provision for trap registration. That would be completely gone. Section 15 of the bill would cause the demerit schedule in statute to expire once the Wildlife Commission re-adopts a new demerit schedule into NAC and it's then approved at the Legislative Commission. Essentially what Assemblyman Hansen is proposing there is that he wants to roll back the demerit numbers, put them in statute, and then once this board has re-heard testimony on the demerit schedule and accepted a new demerit schedule, and then that got approved at the Legislative Commission, which he sits on and blocked your last several regulations. Only then would the demerit schedule come out of NRS and go back to NAC. So probably that was a lot to digest in a short amount of time, but that's kind of what the bill does now. It bounces all over into different chapters and essentially is just a whole scale weakening of our ability to prosecute wildlife crime. Any questions? Just to follow up with Chief Turnipseed, in my ability to review that much of a bill in about two hours yesterday, I think his breakdown is very much what was discussed yesterday in the work session. And again, the work session document is a bit confusing, but it is posted on the Legislative website through NELIS under Assembly Bill 142. I know you guys haven't had the luxury of looking at that language. The fact that there is potentially a short committee meeting today and things may be subject to change, I felt that maybe the conceptual breakdown and discussion of the bill was more appropriate. That language could change even real time as we're discussing it here today. But I think in general, the Commission can probably understand why I had some pretty significant personal concerns over the bill and the various provisions. But I wanted everyone to have an understanding of what conception was being proposed. If this Commission is comfortable moving forward with at least developing a broad platform proposed for those various provisions, that's something that I would certainly suggest and be happy to carry forward as we move through the process. If it does in fact pass out of committee today, it would go to the Senate floor. Obviously, there's been some changes in the event that it passes the Senate floor. It would go to Assembly for concurrence. If they don't concur, it would go to a conference committee. So potentially, this is a long ways from being done. It does give us an opportunity to at least adopt a platform if we'd like to. To be honest, there's probably, if we had six months to work on it, an opportunity to look at developing some things that maybe work. But at this late point in the game, I'm not so sure we have time to fix all the things that I personally would have concerns on or address all the sections that Mr. Turnipseed just presented. So, questions? So, Mr. Chair, you're recommending that we already oppose the bill, but what you're recommending is that we be more specific in terms of the conceptual issues that have been brought to our attention? I think what we opposed is the version of the bill that came out of the Assembly. And I guess my proposal is because all we have really to go off of is a conceptual amendment, is to adopt a platform in opposition of that conceptual amendment, as it was described to us today, rather than trying to step through it page by page, section by section, because we don't have the language in front of us. But can't we, I mean, I'm just asking this question, and I'll leave it up to other people to, I mean, cannot we indicate that by making these changes that they're so substantial that they're basically going to break the current demerit system, which obviously is what he wants to accomplish, I understand that. But, I mean, can we, you know, I think if we go through this point by point, my concern would be that we lend credibility to something that doesn't have any credibility. And I'm just wondering how we could 
um, talk about the bill in totality. As a, in other words, we don't, we really don't want the bill to pass, and that it's not, it's not something that we can amend. I mean, I guess that's the question: is trying to make amendments to what has already been amended, amended is going to be extremely difficult for us to do. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I think it would be easier just to make a broad platform on the conceptual amendments. I, I don't think. Without having the language in front of us, we can step through point by point. And if I could add to that, Mr. Chairman, Tyler Turnip seat again for the record. As you pointed out, um, and, and to the rest of the commission members, uh, a lot of this has changed so much just in the last 24 hours is why we haven't been able to provide this on paper for you. In fact, for three hours this morning, I sat in the back row there and typed up these bullet points as I read through the bill. Um, so I haven't even had a chance to print them for myself yet. But, but. Uh, so I guess that's, you know, this version of the bill is so much different from the way it was yesterday or a week ago or a month ago on anything that you've heard, probably heard before on it. Um, one thing that I did point out that maybe I would just add in in, uh, in closing, I think we discussed it at the uh, subcommittee level, but um, there's, been, there's been a thought uh, presented in some of these hearings that our demerit system is too harsh, too heavy-handed, punishes too many innocent sportsmen. So I, I had Joanne put some of the numbers together for me, which, by the way, <coughs> speaking of her 30 years of service, she uh, knows how to do every part of this job that I don't. But, but um, on average, for the last 20 years, we sell uh, approximately 190,000 licenses every year. We revoke, on average, about 14 people's license privileges per year. If you do that math, it comes out to 99.999925% of licenses sold do not result in license revocation. Uh, basically, 0. 0.00075 license revocations per license sold. Um, I think it would be hard for anybody to contend that this system is uh, unfairly punishing anyone with those numbers in mind. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I guess the issue that I, I this is a problem. I'm trying to be. I know this is on the record, so I'm trying to be very careful about how to say this. I, it's, it's, it appears that we're not going to have the votes to stop it at the committee level. Would you? For, for all I know, that bill has already passed the committee today. All right, so. Potentially. So, the, so then the next thing, is, so it's going to go to the Senate floor. Correct. So it seems to me that you know we probably need to take fairly aggressive action as a commission, um, possibly writing a letter um, conceptually indicating our concerns to every senator. And I don't know if we've ever done that, but you know maybe that's what we and pointing out this. I think this is a really critical point that's just been made. You know that if there there are people who say that this is yada yada yada. But if you look at it in terms of you know the actual number of licenses that are issued, this is what it is. And it, if you know if there's still that feeling, then give us the opportunity to try to deal with this not on a minute by minute basis or something to that effect. Right. And I think we're probably saying the same thing in a different way. Um, again, and maybe Mr. Ward, you could address this just knowing how we've listed it and what our latitude is, but. I think a general platform, in op you know, a platform in opposition to the conceptual amendment that is before us today, as, as we understand it, um, the commission would be opposed to that, and, and generally opposed to any subsequent changes that weaken the, the current demerit schedule. So, I mean, we could adopt something like that, and I think it's broad enough um, that it gives us some leeway to address the issues. Is that something that you feel we could do under the <coughs> way this is agendized? For the record, Harry Ward, Deputy Attorney General. Yes, I believe that would fit within the agenda, and I don't think that would be a problem. Okay. Additional questions for Chief Turnipseed? Any discussion by the commission before I take it out for public comment? Okay. Um, I, this wasn't on our agenda, obviously, so I'm not going to break off county advisory boards because obviously you guys haven't seen this. But uh, public comment at this point, specific to AB 142 and the discussion we've just had. Hi, today. Public comment, in Las Vegas. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, we have comment. Mr. Chair, this is Jana Wright. 
I would encourage the uh, commission to adamantly oppose AB 142 entirely. There's so many parts of it that are, are disgusting that I don't know what you're planning on doing, really. I'm not tracking is, but definitely, as chairman, I hope that you would contact the Senate Majority Leader and Minority Leader and explain how terrible this bill is. You know, it undermines Endo. Thank you. Do you want to say Make something? Additional public yeah. comment, Las Vegas. Yes, this is Stephanie Myers, Mount Charleston. It really undermines Endow's authority and it undermines your authority. So it seems that it would be ripe for more aggressive action on the Commission's part. Thank you. Public comment in Elko? No comment in Elko. Okay. I think we may have missed one in Reno. I was late. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to Reno. <clears throat> I guess you have to be careful who you vote for. Um, I'm not some of Hanson's district. I uh, certainly agree with your posture on this bill. Uh, our side is also uh, working on this issue. I do think it's important to take all the administrative steps that you can to uh, uh, register your concerns about this bill, because ultimately uh, your boss, the governor, I assume we'll have some opportunity to sign this or not sign it. And I would hope that uh, should it go that far, you might be able to convince the governor not to sign the bill based upon all the administrative steps having been followed carefully and your views registered specifically all along the line. So, you know, worst case, I think that's a bill. Okay, next public comment, Reno. Yes, for the record, Fred Volz, I think you need to take a much starker approach in terms of framing this issue, uh, whomever you're going to speak to in the legislature. And the way that I would propose doing that is to indicate, do you believe in the state police or the National Guard or the county sheriff or the city police? Because if you do, uh, then completely eviscerating the law enforcement aspect of Endow and the commission makes no sense at all, and you're essentially going to have rogue people out there doing all sorts of things that are not in the public interest. Thank you. Additional public comment? Reno? Last call? Okay, bring it back to the commission. Discussion? Questions? If not, is it, I'm willing to entertain a motion. I would just say your comment at the risk of sounding redundant risk of my, my, I might receive another letter. Uh, the notion that you're going to create right ignorance of the law as a defense uh, basically rewrites, um, I don't know how many of those basic tenets in, in criminal law, uh, a statute that says you, you, you only violate the law if you intentionally or knowingly break it means you engage in the conduct knowingly or intentionally. Not that you had to be aware of the actual law on the books and violated in that manner, but if the intent of this bill is to go that far, I mean, it's a, a, a dramatic step in the American criminal law system. So uh, I, I think I share the sentiments with everybody that's been expressed um, that this is going too far, especially when you hear the numbers and the justification that it's too draconian of a system when we're talking about 14 license revocations a year. Um, that doesn't seem draconian to me. Uh, doesn't even come close. Additional comments? Mr. Chairman, I, I go a little bit further, Brad. I know you're a lawyer and I'm not, but I've worked around the law a long time. I think it's unconstitutional because it does denigrates the rights of those that have had laws violated on them. The, you can't discriminate on that point based on whether it's intentional or not. There are the elements of a crime, and the elements are met, you've broken the law. And that's the way I've always been taught in making an arrest, or, you know, putting in for a warrant for arrest to take or to a magistrate. And there's just no way that this thing would ever pass constitutional muster, in my opinion. I'd be interested to know what the LCB said about this particular law. Uh, you recall, Jeremy? 
But I know the question was raised in work session yesterday because several of the committee members had some question and confusion in terms of what that language specifically meant. And legal also indicated that they had some concern and one of the directions that they got um, in terms of new language that may have come out today that, uh, again, we you know, don't necessarily have access to at this point, is trying to clean that up. Um, and there was even some questions around what the true intent of that language was and whether it met the intent. And so my guess is some of that may have changed. Um, some of my personal consternation with it was um, rolling back the merits. Um, I, I think the, the comment made by the assemblyman in presentation was that we're going to roll the demerits back with some minor changes to what they were in 1999. I guess my personal take on that was I'm not so comfortable uh, undoing all the hard work of the commissions and the cabs and the public process that has been unveiled over the last 16 years just out of respect for those people and, and for our system. Um, personally, I'm adamantly opposed to the bill, and I think I made that abundantly clear uh, yesterday in my testimony. Um, but as Mr. Lent points out, um, I can't convey that position um, being as being from the, co the commission unless I have some sort of platform or background. And so my intent today on letting you guys know what was going on with the bill was to give you an opportunity um, to develop a platform or a position, and I would be glad to relay that. But at this point, I, I don't have it simply because the last opportunity we had to look at this is the version that came out of the assembly. So yesterday when I got up, I said, all I can say on behalf of the commission is that we're neutral because we haven't seen this and we haven't discussed a lot of the provisions. Um, and then the rest of the comments from there were essentially from me on my own behalf. So uh, that's my question to you guys today. I have done as much as I can to give you the detail of what was kind of unveiled yesterday. And I guess as the, the chairman and kind of the defunct spokes, not defunct, but de facto spokesman for the group, uh, I'm happy to take forward a message. I just need you guys to give me some guidance on what message that needs to be. I have one further comment, Mr. Chairman. I think it's very important to put it on the record. There, this discussion of rolling back to merit points has come up in prior meetings when we address legislative bills. I don't think I have heard from one cab. I'm not so certain I've heard from one sportsman come forward to either the legislative committee or to this commission saying that this is a draconian system that needs to be fixed or that there's a problem with the current demerit I don't think I've heard that. Um, I, I may be wrong. I could go back, but I don't think we've heard anything uh, from the community that lives with the existing system that it needs to be fixed and it's, it's broken or anything like that. I know there was uh, some issues here and there on different things, uh, but not uh, throwing out the entire system. I think when we convey this back to the legislature, I think it's important that we make that note of that, that we're not hearing this from the license holders or the cabs. Mr. Chairman, as somebody pointed out that the bill sponsor is, this is there's a personal agenda behind this bill and that he has a long and sordid history of wildlife violations where he's been convicted of. I can't recall that coming up in committee hearings. I know <coughs> I have not brought that up. I'll make sure some people know that. Not from this commission, but from my own point of view. And going back to the law again, it's it, you know common sense tells you, you know, a law enforcement officer and this uh, titers are a little different than the ones I worked with for 30 years. Are not mind readers, and <coughs> I've arrested hundreds of people, and I had quite a large percentage of us. I didn't I didn't mean to kill this person or sell these drugs or uh, rob this store. It was unintentional on my part. Uh, it doesn't really wash. And I've heard people say that in wildlife violations. I didn't mean to fire my firearm and kill a cow elk when I was supposed to be shooting a bull elk. But that doesn't wash either. And I think that's kind of what logic they're trying to portray here. You know, your responsibility is to make sure that before you pull that trigger, you know that you're going to be firing at a bull elk and a bull elk only. Uh, there's no excuse for non-intentional 
deviation from the law. And that's where I think it becomes unconstitutional. I, I just don't think this is going to play past muster if given a lot of guys. <coughs> Beyond, that's, it's, it's, I'm, I can't believe it's gotten us to this point at that, at that body. They're supposed to know better than that. Please point that out if you can. Commissioner McInch. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Commissioner Young, I think that that's kind of the point is that uh, the people that are advocating for the bill are in positions to where they can get it to where it's at. Um, you know, they've shut down shut down our process, which has involved cabs in the public, and um, certainly, uh, uh, you know, there's been been blockades put up, and so things can get filtered into this fashion. So, you know, the bill has essentially become a dumping ground for all the nonsense that couldn't survive on its own or as part of another bill. And uh, it's like the, the cumulative effect, it got... It gained power somehow. It gained traction um, when instead of uh, a bill with one dumb idea in it, it's a bill with ten dumb ideas, and it gained speed. And I, I don't think any of us are really going to process it other than uh, somebody knows how to work the system. They're masterful at it, and uh, they're leveraging things. And I believe that there's personal issues involved. And um, uh, so, how do we deal with it outside of coming being adamantly opposed and talking with their own legislators and stuff? But uh, um, there's not a lot to work with in this bill anymore. Um, uh, th there's a lot of things that are just uh, they're just out of line, and, and uh, you know. So, so back to what Commissioner Lane was saying, you know, how, you know, do we take a position where we try to salvage some part of it to have to, you know, to be part of the conversation, or do we just come out and say um, this thing is so bad? Um, you know, there, there's proposals to hold our feet to the fire to be responsive to the cabs, um, and yet. The hypocrisy of it is, is that you know we're going to change and change the whole system without going through the cab process or a public process, and um, I find that very hypocritical. And uh, um, you know, and I, I do think we need to come out opposed. Uh, pretty much just um, how do you hit a moving target? You know, if it changes, um, uh, and I think that it, at this point it's so late in the game that we just say, you know, anything having to do with the demerit system, anything having to do with um, you know, a bunch of these things that are in here, we're just opposed. It doesn't matter um, if it stays anywhere near what it's like now, we're opposed to it just because it's too late in the game and we're not, there's games going on and we're not part, we don't want to be part of that. Further discussion? Commissioner Bliss. Like to add, I mean, there's not a whole lot more I can say um, to add to the conversation that's been had. Um, I agree with all the comments that have been made here, but. Speaking is just as a average everyday sportsman, um, when I read this language, it disappoints me. It disheartens me. Um, that our wildlife deserves the respect <coughs> and that protection. And in some of these comments, I, I don't do that. And um, so I, I am adamantly opposed to any of these changes. Just out of the respect for wildlife that we have in the state. Okay, additional comment? All right, I'll take a stab at this then. Oh, I just like my just head. Go ahead, Commissioner hey, Johnston. I may be going a little too far. Uh, but I'll give it a shot. I, hearing all the public comment that we've heard, uh, I would move that this this commission adopt a platform that opposes legislative efforts, including the legislative efforts of Assemblyman Ira Hansen to AB 142 or otherwise to gut the current demerit system, take the demerit system away from the commission, drop the penalties for wildlife crimes in order to make enforcement of wildlife crimes more difficult. Well, I'll second that to start the conversation. Commissioner McDenny? You're not going too far. Additional discussion on the motion? Any discussion on um, any other aspects? Shed antlers, I know, is a big issue for some of the cabs. Uh, would definitely hamstring us there. So I'd offer maybe a friendly amendment to uh, on the on your list enumerated to add uh, that we do not support 
limiting our ability to regulate shed, shed antlers to commercial purposes only. I would accept that amendment. Thank you. Is the second okay? I will accept that. Sure. Any other discussion on the motion? Commissioner Wright. But, but Mr. G, if you, if you get into that, then you kind of open the door. It's going to force you to go into other specifics. Do you really want to do that? Or do you want to make that broader statement that's already been proposed by Commissioner John? I mean, I'm just concerned that if you start talking about specifics in the bill, then you kind of open yourself up to having to address each one of these issues. And I don't believe that you really want to do that. Brad, can you repeat the, the uh, original motion? Uh, I move that the commission opposes the legislative efforts, including those of the Assemblyman Ira Hansen through 142 or otherwise, to gut the current demerit system, to take the demerit system away from the commission, insert it into the better right statute, softens penalties for wildlife crimes, and or makes enforcement of wildlife crimes more difficult. Would you consider uh, changing the word gut to something different? Sure. Uh, maybe a little word smithing. Absolutely. With your legalese lawyer abilities. Change or eliminate the demand system. You know, I actually like the word gut okay. because he's gutting it, but. Uh, okay, go with it. <laughs> someone can give me a better word, I like. Uh, um, Change, I don't think, is, is really the, the issue. Uh, I think if there was reasonable changes to the demerit system, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I, I would say I think it's very appropriate for the subject matter. I was thinking of eviscerate, but gut, well, let's go with that. I would, accept, I would, I would ah. change gut to eviscerate. I think that's even stronger, Commissioner Young, but <laughs> yeah, so let it be noted that that was your word, not mine. <laughs> Further discussion on the original motion? I think the motion is a good motion. Okay, any further discussion or question on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> All opposed? <coughs> I believe unless there's any questions or comments, that would be it for agenda item number nine.